Welcome to Naive Investor. My name is Gustavo Sayani. Today is December 6th, 2018, and this is our episode number 400. 400 round number, and we do nothing special because of that. As a matter of fact, uh, superstitions uh, like that uh, are a major uh, stumbling block for people who are investing or sometimes unbeknownst to them in speculating. So yeah, we use a base 10 uh, to count, uh, so on and so forth, but whatever, you know, yep, 400. Cool, so with that very up uplifting uh, introduction, today's randomly selected company is called Omega Geração. As the name says, it's a gener uh, energy generation company. <clears throat> you see like a a wind turbine here or turbine how do you say that in English I don't know so they're communicating that they're working on on clean energy so they say here uh, our assets we'll take a quick look but this this struck me the next one here take a look so it's a, a generator of a, a renewable energy without any exposure to the development of assets okay and then the, on the other ones they say our assets I, I to me at least it was confusing it's like like a conflicting message there slow to load very slow to load <clears throat> but it does load so a lot of wind This is, uh, how, do you, how do you call this, hydroelectric. So we're seeing like three wind, one hydroelectric, another hydroelectric, wind, hydroelectric. So yeah, so by basically a lot of hydroelectric and wind uh, plants there, great. A lot of it is in the... Midwest of Brazil. It's different from the American Midwest. There was one in the state of Rio de Janeiro, so southwest. Yeah, some some on the southeast. Excuse me, southeast and some. Yeah, located in the north of Brazil. Yeah, this this is uh, Piauí, Maranhão are very uh, wind blast places. So you will see wind there. Uh, if Unlike, for example, in Europe, I haven't been to the States in, in many years, in almost nine years, I think. But in Europe, uh, we do see in Holland, in many places, a lot of these. Uh, but in Brazil, in my region, which is the most developed, developed, I don't see any. We use a lot of hydraulic power. All right, I've, I've talked a, a lot for somebody who doesn't really you know, know this company. But what we have here in terms of numbers is very little. And the reason is pretty clear. <clears throat> Debt to equity is at one. That's it. This uh, this does it for me. Okay. So total debt divided by net equity, one. So it's far above what I I I feel comfortable uh, operating in, which is from zero to zero point five typically. Yes, I'm willing to, to to get out of that, especially on the upward side. But after one, you know. It's tough for me. So today it's time for us to just update our numbers. Hard to find the ITR here. But here it is. Mm -hmm. 
awkward silence. This website has like a latency that's very strange. We'll also try to go to Morningstar. Homem da geração. Files. Sometimes it's quicker to do it this way. Go figure. Okay, so the DFP is downloaded, we get what we want. <clears throat> nice, so we have the liabilities table, passivo, consolidated, so including their subsidiaries. So here's September 30th, 2018. And their net equity here, it was at 1806 versus 1811 at the end of 2017. So the, the variation is minimal. And after adjusting for inflation, it's moved down. I mean, it has moved down, but it's moved down even more. All right, so now we can look at liabilities. So 264 plus 2044, 2308. Liabilities are up. So the ratios have worsened. And we see this up across this industry for the vast majority of companies. This year has been tough, another tough year in Brazil. But the stocks keep going up. There's a, a, an asynchronicity there, which is pretty typical. But, yeah. All right, so in terms of debt, so empréstimos, financiamentos, and the ventures, Current, 146. Non-current, 2015. We see that it's increased both in current and non-current. So now debt to equity is at 1.20 and liabilities to equity are at 1.21, 28, excuse me. So it's, it, it is striking and interesting to see that the liabilities are not much higher than the debt here okay so this is a, a, an attenuating factor but not much because the debt's high anyway so we move forward to the current ratio now all right so 853 divided by 264 which is the current assets divided by the current liabilities 3.23 this, yeah, is look. This looks better because the current assets have increased by quite a bit, and the, the current uh, liabilities have decreased by quite a bit. So it's like okay, they have money in the pocket to to pay their existence through another year. You know, great. That, that's good to know. Better than. The opposite. Cool. So now we can jot down the revenue here. So we'll do that very simplistic extrapolation from three quarters to four, which is taking this number and multiplying it by 1.333. And it's a striking movement upward here. So this is this we see this in more places, right? So it's not like the economy is still bad. The economy seems to have improved from the the very bottom, but the companies are cleaning up their balance sheets. So the revenue is up here, so that's not totally surprising. But it doesn't really reflect on the bottom line many times. All right. So here they seem to be taking a loss here of nine. Nine divided by three multiplied by four. That'll be uh, 12. So this is what I'm talking about. You know, it may be a coincidence, but it happens a lot. So the revenue's up, but the earnings are down. So it's almost like, okay, you know, we 
we have to deal with this situation. Hasn't really reflected it in, in the net, net equity uh, liabilities here, so it's not that clear. But... onwards to free cash flow. All right, so the op operating cash flow is 103 million, but the investing cash flow was minus 263. Excuse me. 103 minus 263. No, 103, 103 minus 263. Okay. Minus on 60, and we extrapolate from three to four quarters, 213. Minus. So this, you know, how can we invest in this company uh, knowing what we know? Unless we're like special situations. You know, if you're like a very experienced special situations guy, you're not even watching this video, you know what I mean? Uh, for more uh, generalistic, you know, less niched uh, investors and value investors, long-term oriented, this does it for us. High debt, losing, not earning money over time, uh, you know, unfortunately, it's a pass. So this is how we've celebrated episode 400 of Naive Investor. And if you're still here, Thank you very much. I appreciate your uh, viewership. And uh, in case you're not a subscriber yet, you're a serious candidate because you, you look, looks like you have the bug there. Uh, in which case, please uh, click or tap on the subscribe button so that you may get the occasional uh, you know, notification or something from YouTube on our future episodes. I invite you to watch our past episodes. We do have 399 other episodes at this, time, at this point. I definitely and heartily invite you to watch our future episodes. And if you have questions, suggestions, criticism, and especially if you spot mistakes in the analysis, please leave a comment in the video and I'll be happy to write you back as soon as I can. Meanwhile, uh, I hope to see you next time and have a beautiful day.